Hello and welcome to episode 242 of the Epic Film Challenge to A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die from 1962. La Jetée. Jetée? The Pier. Uh, Could French be La Jette. Film. No, it's, it's Jetée. It's, it's vaguely La Jetée. I'm not the best at French, pronunci French pronunciation, but uh, it's, it's fairly close to that. Anyway, The Pier. We'll call it The Pier. That's what it means, and that what that's what the film is kind of about is the central location of a pier on an airport, which is interesting. I've never seen that before. I don't know if it was like a thing back in the sixties, that time period or whatever, but it's kind of like a viewing pier, I suppose. You can see the planes and things like that. This is a really, really interesting film. I immediately gravitated towards it when I first heard about the way that it was shot. So this film is uh, French. Although we watched an English version because it's all narration, there's no there's dialogue, but you you don't really hear you know much going on. So you want to look at the pictures anyway, don't you? You don't want to be reading subtitles. I suppose yeah, and so it's I guess I, I wasn't too. I usually I like to stick to the original language, but I wasn't too uh, bothered about hearing the English narration, which sets up the story of a a future in which World War Three has happened. Paris has been destroyed completely. I thought that sequence was really interesting when you see the ruins of Paris and things like that. People are living underground and we follow this man who is, I think he's captured as part of this. There's like this group who are capturing people and experimenting on them. It's a science fiction film and they're sending people back into the past and experimenting with their brains and time travel basically. And at one point they even go... You make it sound so interesting. And I'm just thinking, like, that's not how I felt it was when I was watching. That. And at one point they send people, they send them far into the future. So it's a really interesting time travel film. But the key element of this movie is that it is completely comprised, with one exception, of still images. Photographs. There is no moving image. There's uh, one. Like I just said, I just said there's one exception. Oh. Because I knew you'd say, there is one. Uh, yes, there is one brief, like, one second clip of motion, which I thought was great. That was probably my favorite part of the film. Because it kind of catches you off guard and, and really makes you realize, it's like halfway through the film, it makes you realize what a difference it is. So, the story, you don't really get to know the characters very well. The film's like 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And I was really impressed by how it told this really good story in a very short amount of time. But, you know, that's kind of the, the casualty of having a short film and doing it in this way is that you don't really get to know the characters all that well. You have the man, the leading character, who we open the film with. He's got this memory when he was a young boy seeing a woman's face on the pier at an airport. And because he had such a strong connection to that image, it was one of those kind of mental images that were, was burned into his brain. It's just something really connected to him. He always remembered it throughout his entire life. And because he had that strong connection to a, a mental image, that made him really susceptible to being used in this time travel experiment because of the way his brain works. So they very successfully send him back in time. And the way they do it is really interesting and different. And he begins to lead a life where he's living out of time, basically, and he meets a woman. And, you know, it, it goes from there, basically, and leads to, to the, the finale. And this is the film that inspired 12 Monkeys which is a film I loved in my teenage years. I haven't seen it in many, many years. The Bruce Willis movie, yeah. Terry Gilliam. Uh, and so I can see where it's inspired. And it's cool to kind of think of 12 Monkeys now as the, the live-action expanded version of a story like this. It's obviously very different, but... I was going to say, but it's it's not like it at all. It, it is in a way when you think about it and you think about where than the story any time goes. travel movie. Yeah, I suppose. But anyway, so... The still image aspect of this film, I loved, right? Because to me, there's something really cool about just a still image, specifically like film images, like how we have like um, our phones are cameras now, right? So we can take pictures and pictures and pictures. If I'm out, out and about in the street and I see like a nice cloud, I'll stop and take a few pictures of it just to, to make sure I get a, a really good one. And you just wouldn't do that when you had film because it, everything was so valuable. But also just the, the grain structure of a film photograph. is There's something more, I don't know, there's something special about it, capturing a moment in time. And film, the moving image, is just images. It's 24 images every single second that looks to the naked eye like it's moving and it's, you know, like it's replicating real life or a slightly different surreal version of real life. 
because you know you can look at video and it looks more like reality. Film looks more more different, more filmic, I guess, for a lack of a better word. But just using still images, I thought really worked. So how did you feel that aspect of the film worked with the it still images? It didn't work for me. It didn't. Okay, no, that's cool. The only thing that made me go, oh was the one image that moved. Okay, yeah. And it's funny that it did because it was something they were doing to him. I can't remember. They were taking something off him or on him. And then I felt like the image moved. It was probably <laughs> because there was the passing or maybe how quickly they moved or something all of a sudden. Yeah. And then when it was just zooming in and in or something on that woman and she was just moving very slightly and I felt like this is turning into stop motion almost <laughs> and then I was thinking is she gonna move and then she did and I went ah it was just a blinking and then they of an didn't eye, do it you know. again yeah because I was hoping the rest would actually be moving nah. kind of like uh the the movie with the girl we're not in Texas anymore uh the Wizard of Oz yes Kansas where it all of a sudden it turns into <laughs> color we're Which not... is refreshing. Yeah. Um, oh, I... Kansas. Yeah. Uh, not Texas. That's right. Where is Kansas? Moving swiftly on. Um, I don't Isn't know exactly. Kansas I don't... Texas? Uh, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I'm not a, a geography scholar. I'm still talking about what I felt. I was just comparing it to how it was. Yeah, that's a You've good... No, no, that, 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 is, that, is a, that is a good comparison. Okay, good. So, I was thinking, oh, it's going to get interesting now. But then they kept doing the photographs. And then in the end... I was just sat there thinking, like, like what he didn't. What was the, well, what, All right. what was I thinking? I said something. Didn't didn't I? Say, oh, he made a wrong choice or something. Yeah. Okay. We won't, we won't go into the ending, but I think that the ending maybe suffers now watching it for the first time in twenty eighteen because we've seen so many films with these twist endings. And I think back then in the sixties, it was probably a little bit more uncommon. I'm you've always had twist endings, but even going back to like the silent era. But I'm confused as well about the ending. Like okay, uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll discuss at the end in a brief. In I a... think maybe I was too sleepy to understand everything. Okay, and also I was just a little bit too bored to really let it stick to my head. I do not want to watch it again. So you can yeah. explain it to me if you want. To. Yeah, yeah. But it would definitely spoil something if you explain it to me now. Yeah, I can understand why you didn't take to it. I I don't think it's a thing where everyone should should love it and appreciate it. it it's a, it's a weird way to do a film, and it's very dreamlike, which is totally suited to to the. I mean, it's most of the film takes place in this weird. It's almost like a dream to him. He is going back in time inside his own mind, but then is he really? You know, it's so there's like uh like the scenes where him and specifically the one where him and the woman go to a museum. And they're looking at these these you know these skeletons, these dinosaur bones, and things like that. And it does take on a very dreamy kind of you know, your mind starts to wander a little bit. But I think that's suitable to the story that's being told. And I just think some of the composition and the lighting of these these images is so great. I just love looking at really nice photographs, and that's what this film is: twenty minutes of really nice photographs. It's well done. The pictures were good, you know. Yeah, at least you can agree on that. But uh, yeah. but I understand. But to it, me, it's... a movie is. Moving pictures, but okay. But well, yeah, and, and also I love how it's a time travel movie, and the whole movie is time travel. You know, from from one image to the next image. Yeah, but it's mental time travel, isn't it? It's no, not no. like he physically goes back in time. He's well, just lying there well, on no, the bed. Well, no, it is kind of in or a way. Bench or it is in a way. I mean, it, it, if you really want to think about it, I guess you're going to. Ah, just went back in time. Oh, I am in Japan right now. <laughs> let, let, just to finish my thought. Because, like, say a sequence where the man is back, back, gone back to the past, he's met the woman, they're walking around, and you're seeing this sequence in different chunks, like they're walking through a park, they're in a museum. So every cut of this film is, in effect, a time jump, you know? So there's all these removed moments, and so just, just jumping from, from piece to piece is very appropriate to me for a time travel story, so that element I loved. And I guess we can, we'll round up now with our final thoughts, and then we'll do a little spoiler section so I can maybe kind of explain to you the ending if you didn't understand. Is it a film you should see before you die? Do you have to ask? I Definite thought... no. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's, that's well, fine. I didn't like it. And I think 95% of the world's population wouldn't like it either. It's very special. You have to be really into movies. You are over average <laughs> when it comes to interest. Yeah, I mean, look at this, you know. <laughs> he sometimes he's collecting things just because it's from a certain whatever the whatever you call the people again? Arrow? No? Criterion? Arrow. Criterion. 
Yeah, the hey, Criterion hey, Collection. Hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, 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 hey, no. I get it. It's no, no, fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> but movies to him, it's like stamps is to an old man in his seventies. No, that's different. Stamps all his no, life. that's different. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, we're going to get into this now. No, and... no, we're going to get into this now because you're saying I buy these films because I like to collect the Criterion Collection. That is incorrect. I like the Criterion Collection because of what they do with movies, how they present movies. So I'm not buying it just to put it on the shelf and collect it. I buy it because I can watch that film and enjoy it. It's a very big part of it, though. Of course, of course, the collecting is an element, but it's not purely a, a, a collecting kind of um, no. impulse. It is but wanting it the film to watch element, it. But if it wasn't a element, you wouldn't be checking for dents and everything and wrapping them in plastic. He's over average. Yes, okay. Over average, over the average. <laughs> See, my English has kind of... Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. We're not going into that. We're not going into that. We're not going into that. I'm not going into it. I'm just saying, of course you would like it because you're kind of weird. And there's not a lot of people out there who would appreciate how different this. Well, your ninety-five percent assessment, is. I wouldn't agree with, but uh, I do understand where you're I coming from. That so. I do understand where you're coming from, but I will, I will say that it's, it's not just to, to collect it. I would like say a stamp. only probably about thirty percent of the world's population likes Charlie Chaplin, and that's great stuff. No, I, I bet that percentage is high. Right, we're, we're just going off onto a tangent again. So it's a no from you. For me, it's a definite yes. I think it's a really interesting film. It's one I want to watch again, and I think I would enjoy it more the second time around. My mind did wander a little bit, but it is a dreamy kind of film. But it's not very long, so I think it's a really cool, different way of approaching telling a story in a film. That's Points why I enjoyed for it originality. Yeah. Then again, most things were original in the 60s. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, stuff had been made. so we've given our thoughts, so we'll just do a very brief spoiler section at the end here. Okay. So, obviously... Was he dead all along? When he was a boy, he was on the pier at the airport. He saw this woman's face, and just that image kind of really st Is stood out mom? to him. No. Was she his mom? No. And then he saw a man get shot. So it was a very, like, you know, that memory's burned into him. He lives his life. World War Three happens. He gets kind of taken down and experimented on. And he travels back in time. He meets this woman, who turns out to be the same woman. How that happened, I guess, is just up to the fantasy of the story. And then he sees the people from the future, and then he goes, uh, you know, back again, and he realizes, I guess, uh, where he needs to go, and he, he finds himself at that airport again. He rushes along the pier, which is a great sequence, to see her face, to see this woman at the end of the pier, because he believe, believes it's the same woman, and then he gets shot by, I guess, the... Uh, the, the suits, the evil men of the film. I mean, it, there isn't really anything clearly defined in terms of that kind of thing, but... It turned out that the man he saw dying when he was a child was, was himself. Him. But I guess your problem is you don't, you really don't like time travel when it comes to loops like that, and you think no, that it no, work. that's not the problem at all. One, was he dead all along? Then was he actually going back in time? If he was already dead, who's the kid that he was that he remembers? Was she his wife? Was if he was already dead on the thing? Was he actually going into the future? I don't understand. He wasn't already dead. No, I mean. Yeah, but he went back in time and it turned out the guy who got shot was him. Did he go back in time into a different body? See, that's the thing. Like, what body is he in? Like, I mean, that's just stuff himself? that you just have to... That's that's stuff that I think... if you Will that boy just evaporate? Because if he was the boy and he saw that guy got shot in the past, will that boy disappear? Because he got into that body and he's now in, in the... Past See, this is what happens when you take a story like this and you go, well, how would it work logically? Well, and then you just kind of struggle with it. If you write a story, don't you want people to think about it? Or do you want That's when you write it? a story. This is a, this is a more, uh, you know, it's more of a poetic kind of thing, I think, a okay, film like this. But you're, so. you're supposed to pick it apart. You're supposed mm. to try and figure out why was it like this. You can and you can cannot, it's I guess. It's a twist. Yeah, it's a twist. You don't watch Inception and just accept that it's spinning. You're supposed to sit there and go, did it drop? Like right. you're supposed to think about it. That's what they want when they write these things. And they're David lynching it. Mm, I think there's different ways of there's different ways of looking at something like that. Well, what do you, you think then? Was he already dead? Did he go back into it's, a different it's, body? It's not a film where I go, hmm, let me get my notepad picture? out and really think about this. No, it's then I just I, I just point. enjoy it as a oh it, it was he saw himself getting killed. Like I don't. That's not I'm something. I'm not talking like, about the technicality of time travel. I'm asking who was he. Where <laughs> and when was this? I just imagine Connie going up to the director's door going, ending. Who was he? When was this? <laughs> I can't believe that you don't understand why. I, I just want answers. 
I, I don't understand if a film that you didn't enjoy that much anyway is, is really Was bothering Was he already with... dead? Did he actually go back in time? Did he go back in time and end up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why the whole film would show you time travel if it wasn't really time travel. Like an end, like an ending where it's like, oh, actually, none of that happened. He's dead. Like that's just a really weird and unsatisfying twist. I think. So the only possible answer can be that he was traveling through time, and he got shot at the end. And when he was a young boy, he saw himself getting killed. It's kind of. You know. When he was a young boy, he saw himself getting killed, but it was a man there. Yeah, because that was him later on in his life, after he had grown up and lived through World War Three, and then gone back in time. And, you know, he, he'd like gone... Like Looper, then? Yeah, he'd gone back in, in time to the past, but that was at the point when he was a child, his, his child's present. But that woman, was she already, like, in his life and he was just rushing to meet her because they'd already been together for that long? In the past, yes. Because he met her in the past when he was initially going back See, in time. See, and now I start thinking about the paradox. <laughs> well, First now, I swear to you, until okay. you said that now, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about it, and we're going to end this discussion. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Leave that there. I swear I didn't think about it until now. Me and Connie and time travel and paradoxes are conversations that do not go well. So. On Stephen Hawking's side. Okay. Yeah. Well, to me, they're movies, not, um, you know, um, scientific studies. So, <laughs> thank you no, for watching. it doesn't have to okay, be. Okay, alright, okay. Having logic in there is nice, okay? Yes. Alright, so thank you for watching. You know? He talks and talks and talks, but when I want to open my mind, it's like, are you done? <laughs> it's just a dead end, though. It's just, you, 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 it's with time really. travel, you never get satisfied Leave some with. Leave comments in the comment section. Like, if you've seen the movie, yep. give us your thoughts. Sure. Like, I, I, what I'd do you think happened in the end? If you do end up watching the movie, see what you think. Yeah. What do you think about it? But I would travel? recommend people to watch it, especially given the, the, the length. I watch, we watch it on Filmstruck, so it's easily kind of available to watch and stream people who watch these videos are over <laughs> yes okay the average yes i, well, I would agree yeah probably Most i feel people. like i'm saying that sentence wrong over the average interested yeah that's not that's something oh wrong my about God, that. this is going so far um above average above average interested in movies so you should watch it yeah. but for the rest of the mortals out there maybe not Alright, so <laughs> it's a yes from me, it's a no from Connie. Unless you're like Luke. Yes, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.